they haven't got a clue what to do. They could have got a handle on it, but the Prime Minister went on holiday. They could have acted faster and more um, convincingly, but it would probably have involved having to copy, for example, Germany. And could you imagine a government elected on the back of xenophobia and nonsense about German uh, dominance in Europe having to say, well, the best thing we could possibly do at this moment is completely copy Germany? I, I mean someone honest would have done it, someone with integrity would have done it, someone elected on truths and principles might have been able to do it, which kind of rules out this lot. So we find ourselves today learning from Boris Johnson last night that we were supposed to be going to work this morning, finding out from Dominic Raab an hour ago that actually that isn't supposed to kick in until Wednesday. You can meet one person, one person from your household can meet one other person from another household in the park, but not in the garden. Um, you can meet one parent, but not the other parent. You can hang out with them two metres apart, but not play golf with them. You can go back to work, but not go back to work. If you can work from home, then work from home, but don't get on public transport. It is absolutely staggering. And I don't believe that the reason is sinister. Well, unless you consider abject chaos, confusion and uh, disingenuousness to be sinister. But it's not as sinister as a secret plan, is it? There is no secret plan. How do you know that? Well, because there is clearly no plan at all. I have no idea how hard you would have to be tugging your forelock this morning to pretend that what has been presented to the country is anything other than catastrophic. It's as if, it's as if having gone all in on uh, a pair of twos... <laughs> that the government have decided to borrow money and, and double down on their bet, despite the fact that a pair of twos is... Hard, well, not even a pair of twos. I can't remember what the poker phrase is for having absolutely nothing in your hand. But it's as if they're doubling down on, a, on a, an already disastrous situation. So, a couple of platitudes for you, I suppose, just because they got it wrong yesterday doesn't mean they'll get it wrong tomorrow. But tomorrow is Tuesday. And Dominic Raab has already revealed that actually the things that were supposed to happen today are going to happen on Wednesday. And what are the things that are going to happen today? Do you even know what you're allowed to do? If my daughter wants to meet with a friend, does she become the one person from our household who can meet with one person from another household? And do they have to stay two metres apart from each other? And what if while they're two metres apart from each other, someone from another household who they happen to know walks past? So that there are now three people from three different households, all two metres apart from each other, but one of them is somehow breaking the rules. Which one? Yeah, you're beginning to see the problem, I think. Unless, of course, you can tug that forelock so hard that reality has ceased to be a thing that you are capable of recognising. And then we come to the, what I have to describe as the class element of it. Again, I, I think this is probably either unintentional or inevitable, but it's certainly something that won't be keeping Boris Johnson awake at night. The, the pain of what is to come, both mental and potentially medical, will be felt much more keenly by people who work in facilities, by people who cannot work from home, by people who are, in other words, not remotely clerical or white collar. You know, it's as if a cleaner has to go and clean a building, but the manager who's in charge of doing the shifts can do his spreadsheets on his laptop at home, or her laptop at home. And again, I don't think that's intentional, and it's probably inevitable, but it's pretty grim, right? It's pretty grim. Public transport, already going to be full of people who feel they have no choice but to go back to work. I am obviously a very privileged middle-class man, but I have, believe it or not, done some normal jobs. Jobs I would loosely describe as normal. I, I, I won't wax lyrical about the two weeks I spent on a building site in Doncaster many, many moons ago, but I would remind you I've worked in shops. I would still be working in shops now if the career fairy hadn't waved her magic wand and somehow got my foot in the door of the media. I love working in shops. I've worked in bars. I've worked in restaurants. And you know and I know what that can be like. You know that telling people that they they can still exercise a degree of discretion over whether they go back to work or not. As soon as this furlough legislation either lifts or loosens, you know what it's like to have a boss who's a git. We all do, right? I used to work for a fella. Oh, man. Just in a normal high street retail shop, but he, 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 he thought he was Genghis Khan. He thought he was running ICI. I, he used to make me get a letter off the station master at Worcester Four Greek, Fourgate Street Station if I was going to be late for work because the trains were delayed. And the station master didn't get into work sometimes until half an hour after I was supposed to be at my work. So rather than turn up at work and just believe that I was late because the train had been delayed, I used to end up being an hour later than I would have been anyway because I was waiting for the station master at the station to 
provide me with a letter to show to my manager to prove that I wasn't lying about the train being delayed. And you've worked for someone like that as well. You probably still do. What are they going to do today? Oh, that's fine. Yeah, that's absolutely fine, Mary. You stay at home until you feel a little bit safer. What's that? You've got your shielding a relative. Oh, okay. Well, you're not going to get paid this month. You can jog on for that. And then, of course, people like me can sit at home, even if I didn't do this for a living. I could be sitting at home tapping away on my £1,000 computer, happily submitting work from several miles away from what is ordinarily my office. And that is where we are now. There's this sense, isn't there, that it's somehow going to end and at the end of it we'll be able to look around and decide who's had a good game and who's had a bad game. The point is that without clarity and leadership, it never ends. It never ends until the vaccine is available and the vaccine doesn't look like being available anytime soon. Send them back to school. Okay. No, we can't do that. Send some of them back to school. Which ones?